Us now on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline via Zoom is BYU Safety's coach Preston Hadley, former BYU football standout. Preston, welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. I appreciate it, fellas. Uh, you got your uh, baseball swag on, Miami Marlins hat. Uh, is this because you're so excited to have baseball back, Preston? I, I wish I could say that was my reason. Uh, no, I just pick up hats anytime I visit a place, you know. So I happen to be in Miami. I thought the hat good. Got a nice little orange accent around here. I feel like orange goes good with with a lot of things, you know, in my uh, in my wardrobe. And so uh, here we are. You, you look good in orange. I'm gonna be honest. Uh, you're also repping the PG. You always represent PG. Uh, oh, we, all, all day. We, all day. So so back when you were just you know a lowly GA, not a <laughs> real position coach. Uh, we used to play on an intramural flag football team with our guy Zach Brady as quarterback, and we we uh, we won the ship one year. And I think the year you played, we had, what, three dudes that uh, weren't in BYU boundaries or something, so we were ousted in the semis? <laughs> yeah, some, we had some allegations against us from uh, BYU Honor Code over intramurals. And so uh, I think, yeah, we ended up getting ha getting axed out of there. To be clear, the Honor Code was not involved. It was just whether <laughs> they lived in the boundaries, right? <laughs> Dude. Due to dishonest, we're dis you know, I think uh, Wait, they let us off yes. light with that one. Well, we weren't dishonest, those guys were. But anyway. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But anyway. Hey, I, we were the victims here. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. <laughs> so today's our safeties preview, so let's break it down. Spencer was spraining news over here talking about Kavika Fonua. I'm just talking about potential. Potentially being considered to move positions, maybe even with the safeties or something. So t tell us about the group. We, we talked about... Troy Warner and Zane kind of being the cornerstone seniors there, experienced guys. Those those are two guys that can make a ton of plays. Yeah. Um, so uh, with Kavika, I'll, I'll address Kavika. I, I haven't had him in my meeting room yet. So uh, he's still shuffling around the linebacker position right now. Um, there's been some, some changes as far as how those positions are being used. Um, but, uh, yeah, he's, he's yet to, to come into my meeting room yet. Um, as a safety, just to help you out there. Um, uh, Troy, yeah, I, I felt like Troy was definitely the standout uh, in the few practices we had in spring. Um, I thought he played at a really high level. Um, probably since since I've been here at BYU, um, it's probably been the best football I've, that I've seen him play. And so it, it makes me really optimistic about um, his ceiling for this season. And um, he's a natural leader. He's a vocal leader as well. And I think he's the the person that we need uh, to be one of those leaders on our team this season. So um, he's he's great for the position group. He's, he's well respected by his uh, by his teammates and by the coaches, and uh, really high football IQ. Um, so I've I've been really impressed and really proud of just kind of how he's conducted himself through uh, all, redshirting all last season to 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 winter conditioning to to spring training to spring to spring ball and then throughout the summer throughout all this whole uh, pandemic you know it's we've been really fortunate we've had strong leaders like him to con uh, to continue to maintain and build the culture uh, within our position group and just on our defense and the team so uh yeah really excited about troy zane is an interesting one um just because he's played so many different positions it makes him really versatile um, on our defense. Um, I think he's good enough to line up at corner, which is something that was being discussed early on. I think right now, uh, moving forward into, into fall camp, um, where he's going to be playing safety right now and, um, really excited about what he can do. Um, he's already been, you know, he started at the position before plus with his linebacker skills, I think he'll come back even more physical, uh, than he was before as a safety. Um, I do think he's a good tackler and he's, he's very fast as well. Um, so, uh, Zane, it's, it helps to have two, you know, a fifth and a six year senior, uh, back there, uh, with a lot of experience. I think, you know, from, from losing Austin and, and Diane and, and Bo and Sawyer and, um, those all, you know, all those, all those seniors, you know, they were a really good group. And so, um, usually you'd be, uh, losing sleep at night, uh, losing four seniors that, that were key contributors to your defense or your position group, but we have Zane and Troy coming back as a fifth and sixth year senior. Uh, we've been really fortunate in our position group. So um, I, another another guy is, uh, is Chaz. So Chaz, again, it's, you know, he's he's been cross training both linebacker and safety. Um, I think he'll make a push at, at, uh, at those positions. He's definitely been, been leaning out 
And uh, again, he's, I think he's one of our best playmakers on the defense. And so uh, wherever he ends up on the field, um, hopefully it's in, hopefully it's as a safety. It could be as a linebacker. Um, that will just be something only time will tell um, as far as we, as we get moving into fall camp and see really where the need is. Uh, we're really just trying to find a way to get our best 11 guys on the field. And so um, I think in my position group alone, we have three of them in my group. And so um, not really sure, you know, where, what that will mean for, for everybody, but uh, as, as time moves forward, really that will tell all. So, um, and then uh, like George and Max, you know, both really young and um, raw at the position, but a lot of a, a really high ceiling for both, for both of them. Um, I think George Udo is probably the best athlete on the team. Um, just as far as an athlete goes, um, he's, he's probably the most athletic player on the team. Mm. And so uh, he's a huge ball of potential um, that I've really enjoyed working with him. He's really coachable and he just wants to get better every day. And so he's one that I look forward to. Again, whether he, he ends up as a safety, uh, again, those are, those are calls that as a defensive staff and through, with Kalani, uh, those are decisions that are all made collectively. And so, but for right now, uh, he is a safety and we're, again, I'm, I'm really excited about what he can become in his potential. And along with Max as well, you saw what he could do as a, as a freshman, right? As a linebacker. So um, he did play safety in high school and we'll, we'll kind of see uh, how things shake up for him. So uh, it's a really talented group. You know, I, there's, a, there's other guys to talk about that I can, if you'd like, but um, re really talented. We have a good mix of, of uh, raw and super athletic and then really, uh, seasoned and, and really good football players. And so um, it's, a, it's a good problem to have. There's a lot of, there's a lot of competition. I think there'll be some good depth uh, that we need to continue to develop uh, as we go through fall camp and through the season. In spring ball, there was a rhetoric of potentially toying with a 4-2-5 or something like that. And that, maybe that's the reason that there's this exodus of linebackers because if you only need two, maybe you're just playing with another like Chaz, like maybe even Kavika and whatnot at uh, at safety. Is is there defensively? Are you guys still figuring out the way, like you said, to get the best eleven on the field, whether that be a four-two-five or otherwise? Uh, sorry, you sort of cut out towards the end there. Yeah, it was a bad question anyway. Uh, <laughs> are you guys still toying with how to get the best eleven on the field? Because you've mentioned, you know, Chaz, are you cross trained and Max Tooley's moving and Zane's moving. If you guys run with a four two five or something else, yeah, it's just you're a linebacker, you're a safe. Just get out there, guard this guy, cover this area. Are you guys still figuring that out? Uh, yeah, I mean, and that's something I, I think each year at, at multiple positions and just in college football in general, I think that's something. Just from my experience at the other places that I've coached, um, this has just been part of the process as you get closer to the season. You know, when re when you're trying to uh, replace players who have who have exhausted their their eligibility um it's just about kind of trial runs and, and and seeing who can fit and so um but like with the 425 really like a a four two five is just a four three the only difference is you just have put a nickel in for the outside linebacker but it's technically like if, if we just draw drew up like on the playbook it it looked the exact same just it'd be an n instead of a you know an lb or, or whatever you know so we're just yeah, that, that's that's the goal is getting your best 11, but the best 11 at their position as well, right? So, like, for example, it, Kyrus Tong is one of our best 11, but he wouldn't be one of our best 11 as a safety, you know? Like, I love Kyrus. You know, that's an extreme <laughs> example, you know? And so it's about getting our best 11 at their position, you know what I mean? And so, like I said, what that looks like, it's, it's really hard to say, but um, there's definitely guys there that, that we feel comfortable with and then – um, as we do get going, you know, like I said, we're just going to kind of see how it goes as, as we continue to develop guys at, at the different positions. BYU's so I don't know if that answers your question, but yes. um, yeah, we're, like I said, we, we, we have our base personnel, which is four, three, we have a nickel, which is what most know as a four, two, five, where you have the nickel in for the, for your outside linebacker. And then, you know, we also have other personnel groups. That I'm not going to share, but, um, but yeah, we, we definitely carry that. Um, so yeah, it's just about finding the best guys at those spots, right? BYU safety's coach Preston Hadley with us on BYU Sports Nation. Preston, I want to finish with uh, more of an off-the-field question uh, because of the role that Troy Warner and you uh, are playing, among others, uh, Malik Moore. 
I mean, just have, there have been some incredible efforts uh, to open up society's eyes to Black Lives Matter. As you have dealt with this as a coach uh, and knowing that uh, your players care about this, how has this uh, impacted your team? And, and what have you noticed about the team in terms of getting ready for the season amidst this just uh, unprecedented socio-political situation? Um, just just from, from the lens I, I look at things, and that's a – I think that's a really good question to ask. Um, with with a lot of our with a lot of our players, especially our, our black players, um, I think it's been really good in bringing the team closer together, um, and it's really opened the door to some really uncomfortable conversation that to some conversation that can be uncomfortable for some people. And it really doesn't matter where you're from, you know. Like you you see it out there, right? Like. The, the reality is you get treated different because of the way you look like me. I, I grew up primarily in Pleasant Grove, Utah, but I've been treated differently than my peers that I grew up around, you know, even from, from BYU, there's been, you know, just, just different, you know, like you just have different experiences and it's, it's being treated a certain way. And I'm not always saying in, in a negative way, you know, but be just being treated differently um, by the way you look, but it's, it's been good. I think, you know, like guys like Malik, like, a couple uh, a couple weeks ago, or like a month ago, or so after all this, um, uh, you know, after everything was going on, um, Gennaro and myself, and even Brandon Bradley, uh, the three of us, we were able to go and, and we were able to meet with a lot of our with a lot of our players, um, with a lot of our black players who were who have been affected by this, you know, because you know when you, when you see in the news um, people that look like you getting treated a certain way because of just how they look. I mean, that, that affects you. Right. And you see it all over the country, all over the world. You see it here in our own community. Um, and it comes in different forms, you know, like my, myself, I've, I've, I've one of the lucky ones to that. I can say I, I have not experienced police brutality, but I have experienced other forms of oppression. And, uh, but for, for me, like my parents always taught me to, to frame these things as opportunities for growth and what's meant to learn and how can you grow stronger. But I think this is a, it's been a, this has been huge though, just for, for our country and for our community. Um, and I, I, a lot of these players, like I said, like Malik, D'Angelo, Isaiah Heron, uh, Troy, um, all, all, you know, I, all of them have been, have been really impressive as far as how they've conducted themselves and continue to move forward. Um, just in their life and and just carrying themselves in a way uh, that that they can be an example to people, you know. And so, I mean, I got a ton of thoughts on all this, and I, I don't want to shift the focus of this interview. I, I want to focus it on the players, you know. Um, but it's it's definitely something that like you you definitely feel a certain type of way about. Um, again, because just again, like it, it affects you, right? Like at the end of the day, like you know. It, it, and, and, and again, I don't mean to sound dramatic, but you are a target. You know, I've been targeted multiple times, just even here at BYU um, with, you know, just different, like, I'm not going to go into details, but just different allegations that, like, specifically that, I, like, we've been targeted, you know what I mean? And I think the school's really tried to protect us and, um, and tried to, to go about things in the right way. Um, but yeah, and so it, it's it's a great opportunity. My, I, I've had a it's been a good opportunity for me to to speak out to to my, some of my friends that I grew up with where I never really felt like I could, you know. And so this really gives um, a lot of Black people the confidence to really speak out about things that hey, like this, like when you do this, this this is that's not okay, right? Like although like people's intentions are 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 usually good, um, it's it's been a great opportunity to help educate people basically, and, and how certain things make you feel, um, the way people treat you, you know, how that makes you feel. Um, and so, but like I said, I, I, I really look up to our players for, for how they've uh, been handling this. Um, each of them have been affected differently by it and have different, you know, experience different, different uh, emotions about this. And, and in my conversations with Gennaro and with Brandon, uh, it's been, it's been really, uh, it's been really encouraging, like just being able to lean on each other. And Kalani's been the best, man. Like he's, Kalani's been been preaching this stuff way before all this was going on. You know, like in our team meetings, in our defensive meetings, he'll come into the position group. He he he's been addressing stuff way before all this, and and thing. And so like, he's been he's been great. Like he's been perfect for like 
he, the BYU needs him right now. And uh, he's been perfect for it, man. And so, like I said, like it's, it's been, I think it's been a really positive thing with, amongst our team, you know, especially with the white players, the Polynesian players, like there's been some good dialogue, some good conversation amongst our players that isn't coach led, you know, this is just the feedback that I'm getting from some of the players, you know? And so uh, it, it's been good, you know, um, like I said, I, I really look up to and admire our players for, for how they've been uh, handling themselves through all this. Preston, we're grateful for the conversation. We want to use this platform uh, to promote that uh, that positivity. And uh, we appreciate your insight, uh, not only into football, but uh, into the things that matter most. Uh, we'll talk to you again soon, my friend. Thanks for the time. Hey, I always appreciate you guys. You got it. Preston Hadley on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Deseret First, you know why we show how.